Welcome to this video on biology by perfect scores. This is Preetinder Kaur and in the previous video we just discussed the structure of the DNA. So what we are going to cover in this video is the process of DNA replication. That's a very 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 important and little complex process as compared to the other ones that we've already done. So we are going to explain the replication of DNA in terms of unwinding of the double helix and the separation of the strands by helicase and then the formation of new complementary strands. So basic three processes would be there. First would be unwinding of the double helix. The second process is separation of strands by helicase. And the third process is formation of new complementary strands by DNA polymerase. So before we start going through the processes, a few important things about the two enzymes. Over here in this process we need helicase. And in this process we need DNA polymerase. So what do these enzymes do? Now helicase, it unwinds the DNA. And it separates the two nucleotide chains by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs. And the two separated strands which have been broken due to breakage of their hydrogen bonds, they act as templates for the synthesis of new strands. So that is what helicase does. So what is the role of DNA polymerase? DNA polymerase, it synthesizes new strands from the two parental template strands. So the parent DNA would be split up into two and from each of those two parent strands, new strands would be made by DNA polymerase. What actually happens is free deoxynucleoside triphosphates deoxy nucleoside triphosphates these are nothing but phosphates with these are nucleotides with three phosphate groups that's why we call them three phosphates triphosphates so these free dioxynucleoside triphosphates they are aligned opposite their base partner And a covalent bond is formed. And the energy for this reaction comes from the cleavage of two extra phosphate groups. So the energy comes from the cleavage of two extra phosphate groups. So this part is important. So there are three phosphate groups out of which only one will be used up and the remaining two will be used to provide energy. And now you need to know what is the significance of complementary base pairing in conserving the base sequence of DNA. Now you know each of the nitrogenous bases can pair only with its complementary partner. That means A with T and G with C. So when DNA is replicated by the combined action of helicase and depolymerase, what all happens? The new strands will be identical to the parental strands or the template strands. So 
Secondly, the two DNA molecules formed will be identical to the original molecule. So not only are the strands similar, the molecule as well is completely identical. Now DNA replication, it's a semi-conservative process. So let me draw a diagram for that. So let us suppose that this was the original DNA strand. And it has split up into two portions. Now a new DNA will start forming over here. So you have one chain here. Similarly, one chain over here. And there were pairs between them, two bonds or whichever bonds were there. Similar kinds of bonds will be created here. So that is how the process takes place. So we can say that it is a semi-conservative process. And how is it semi-conservative? Because it, whenever a new double-stranded DNA molecule is formed, one strand will be from the original one, one will be newly synthesized. So the blue one that you can see over here, this is the new one, the yellow one is original. So that is why a semi-conservative process is followed. So that was all that you need to know about DNA replication. The next important thing that you need to know is the difference between DNA and RNA. So DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA is just ribonucleic acid. So in DNA the sugar is deoxyribose and in RNA the sugar is just ribose. In DNA the pairs or the nitrogenous bases are these but in case of RNA there is one change instead of thymine we have uracil. So thymine in DNA is replaced by uracil of RNA. DNA is double stranded. So two strands work to form a helix. RNA is usually single stranded. Not always, but DNA is always double stranded. So DNA will always form a double helix. RNA does not form a double helix. So that is all that we will be covering in this video and in the next video a very important process will be covered that is transcription and translation. So don't forget to watch that video and don't forget to visit our website perfect-scores.com and share and like us at Facebook. If you have any suggestions or feedback, you can send them at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. And once again, thank you so much for watching this video.